Yes, another wonderful g'day to you all. And welcome back to, yes, the club. That's right, Club Prairie Fire, the home of tequila, Tabasco, and the mighty Duckworth Lewis Stern system. I am the professor, and I am currently in Canberra, in our nation's capital, just checking out, um, well, parliament buildings and roundabouts. Pretty awesome. Gilly, he's in the Gold Coast. Uh, Vaughny and Ollie are both in Sydney, and I believe they went on a wonderful little romantic Bondi to Coogee Walk together. Um, I think that's most mornings now, just for a little... I'm assuming it's to come up with a bit of a um, a plan for the English team in India. I'm assuming Vaughny is now consulting Ollie on a full-time basis, um, and he will be sending messages across to Stokesy. Um, there's been a lot going on in the world of cricket over the last week or so. Australia thrashed the West Indies, so but we may have uncovered a new star. England, well, they've finally arrived in India, but it's without Harry Brook. Uh, and we are ready to see if Baz Ball works over there on those subcontinent pictures. Um, minus Brody. What does England look like minus Brody? We have the Sydney Sixers hosting a BBL final in just a couple of days against the mighty Brisbane Heat. Uh, following that, well, that Josh Brown innings, goodness me, we'll get into that. Um, Gilly. Let's start with you, mate. You were on BBL duty last night. Um, <laughs> quite the inning, would you say? Uh, yes. Uh, hello, everyone. Wonderful to be joining you again from the beautiful uh, Gold Coast. What a spectacular place it is. Uh, and, yeah, spectacular innings, no doubt about that. I've been on BBL duty uh Every night, it feels like. I've, if I haven't been on duty, I've been on an aeroplane somewhere. So um, trying to keep up to speed with everything you've just said there, Prof. But uh, Brown Dog, the big Brown, he was remarkable. Just extraordinary hitting. It was a, a pleasure to be there. Uh, a, a, a clear ground that was just full of wholesome goodness. When mum, Chris, was interviewed, she was in tears. Uh, it, it turns out our Fox Sports bosses are going to fly her down to the final and put her up in accommodation. So it was a feel-good story of a century, actually, out there at uh, out at the Carrara Stadium. So big night, big night. We'll just uh, time check it. We're doing this on, what, Tuesday, the day before the Big Bash final. So big night coming up at the SCG. Very much looking forward to it. And let me just say, gents, to those that can't see, that are only listening, uh, I'm holding up a champagne flute with orange juice in it. The request or the suggestion was it was a mimosa, but um, it does look like one. <laughs> I probably wish it was one, but it's not. It's the only vessel for drinking in the house that I'm staying in that uh, could accommodate the orange juice. So uh, top of the morning to you. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a real shame. Gilly, now to our two English members of the team, um, A, how is Sydney? And B, how is that walk that you blokes are doing together? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Morning, everyone. Yeah, the walk was nice with Ollie. We had a nice romantic stroll, just reminisced about, you know, things that we've been doing of late. Um, Ollie kept me up to speed with how he's going off the field, if you know what I mean. He's having some, <laughs> I would say, semi success. I actually, I actually, I don't, I hope you don't mind me saying, Ollie. I, I was introduced to one of his old girlfriends on, on the walk. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I meet him in Bondi and we just managed to go to a cafe and who was outside this cafe but an old flame. <laughs> Can oh. you believe it? <laughs> Lo- lovely stroll, wasn't it, Ollie? Lovely stroll. Thanks for that. I hope she, I hope she doesn't listen. Um, she's one of them. But uh, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a great stroll. We were just talking about um, England's huge success um, in India that's coming any minute. Yeah. How would the conversation go when you stumbled across uh, old flame, shall we call it? Well, uh, how it went was um, I walked over the road with Ollie and there was a lovely lady there and all of a sudden there was a kiss on the cheek from Ollie to this lady. And um, <laughs> you know, it was just a nice conversation. And then, oh, I'll see you Friday on the boat. Now, Ooh, hello. then had a, a little coffee and a juice and he let me know. I mean, look, I'm not going to give any names away, but she's English. She's in about, she's 30. I think that's what he said. Uh, yeah. Very attractive, uh, quite a tall lady. This podcast is about just reliving life, and uh, that was a lovely moment for me to meet one of your ex-flames. <laughs> yep. Yeah, very good. Now, <laughs> Vaughn, you were saying, were we getting into the India-England topic? Is that where we were at? Well, what I was saying, Pro, is that, you know, England obviously play India, uh, five Test match series starting on Thursday. It's probably the most talked about Test series of, of all time because of Baz Ball arriving in India to try and 
um, see how it copes with the tough conditions, the spinning pitches, um, the quality. And I thought uh, of, of many, many people who could come on the pod to discuss this uh, historic series, but no better than the best cricket brain, the player and personnel of, who's had so much success touring India. He's had a huge amount of success bowling to the great Indian batters of the past. And I thought no better than to get Phil Tufnell in his bed, where he is now, <laughs> to come Hello, on boys. the podcast. And there he is. Yeah, in his bed. is. Hello, I'm, mate. Right, lads. I'm in bed because it's, so, it, it, it's so cold here, mate. It's oh, yeah. freezing. Storm Isha. We've got, we've got Storm Jocelyn, Storm Isha. All my fences are blown down. It's an absolute nightmare. We're flooded. So I thought I'd take to my bed with a jumper on and just watch a bit of telly. Hey, Phil, before... No, nice to see you, Phil. Um, and you, mate. Before we, we get on Tough to this, you know, the serious Boys. cricket chat of uh, the India series, just tell me, um, you messaged me last week, or was it the week before, and you were on holiday, and you yes. were on a, a body sculpting holiday. Is that correct? <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was the body holiday. It, yes, I went, I went to a spa sort of holiday. It yes. was quite interesting, Mike. I was up in the morning doing Tai Chi, you know, hold wow. the ball, you know, comb, comb the horse's mane and push and everything like that. So, uh, no, thoroughly enjoyed it. I had a lovely time over there, a couple of weeks, and now come back to this. It's a bit of a nightmare in uh, in England at the moment. As you say, we're flooded, winds, 90-mile-an-hour winds, and everything's flying around, so it's a little bit tricky at the moment. But, Bill, no, I had a lovely I, time over there. Bill, I know you're into your fitness and stuff, but what did the day <laughs> look like on holiday? Did it Well, come uh, from Tai Chi? Tai Chi at seven. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, and then laid on the beach till three, and did a bit of aqua <laughs> and that was about it. But uh, Dawny was off doing all the fitness, so she loves it over there. So I, I was just laying on the beach and messing about, really. But the food was lovely, uh, the wine was great, and had a lovely time. But now back and looking forward to Thursday. Can't wait. I think it's going to be an absolute belter. Now. Obviously, just two days to go. England, have they arrived a little late in Hyderabad? Well, have they left to the last it, minute? Uh, they've been playing golf. In oh, well, story. yeah. Mm. In, an, in an ideal world, you'd probably want to go over there and have a bit of a warm-up game and everything. But I've been listening to some of the feedback coming back. And, um, you know, they went to Abu Dhabi where they can control their practice conditions. You know, they, they know what they're going to get. Um, so I don't see it as a huge sort of like mistake not going over there earlier. Plus, you just can't do it these days, can you? Um, I think last time England won over there in the warm up game, they they faced a sort of a third rate Indian side and faced four seamers anyway. So you know India weren't going to give them ideal nets, ideal preparation. So I think going over to Abu Dhabi where they can control the practice environment, I, I, I think might stand them in good stead. And also there's a couple of nice golf courses. What's the talk at, at, at home there, Tuffers? What's the, the realistic expectation, what the result's going to be? And how effective is uh, the baz ball going to be against the, the tough spinning conditions? Well, absolutely. I mean, we've heard as well that the pitches are going to be a little bit tricky. They're going to spin from ball one. There's going to, I think there's a couple of decent sort of pitches over there out of the five test matches. Um, everyone over here is really excited to see how this new sort of like attitude and new look England side are going to cope in those spinning conditions. As you well know, Gilly, it's, it's, I still think going to India, to, to, to beat India in India is probably one of the biggest challenges in, uh, in in Test cricket, isn't it really? So uh, it's going to be for fascinating sure, for to sure. see how that turns out. Yeah, see, so it's going to be fascinating to see how that all sort of comes about. I think everyone's really up for it. Everyone's really excited to see how what the outcome's going to be. Um, yeah, so we're all looking forward to Thursday. Uh, Phil, um, mm. obviously the news in the last um, forty eight hours: Harry Brook unfortunately is going to go home. Um, yeah. Virat Kohli misses the first two again, personal reasons. So. Uh, like for like, kind of uh, swap Virat for Harry Brook. Um, you know, oh, 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 o
you know, 12 test matches. Um, <laughs> now, all, all the talk is of 5 0, Phil. Do you, do you think England will win 5 0 or 4 0? What, what do you think it's going to be? <laughs> Well, I, 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 I think we're going to struggle a little bit, you know. Um, as you say, it was a bit of a loss losing Harry Brook. He's a fantastic player, great player of spin. Uh, but I think in a funny sort of way that it might just balance up the side a little bit because I think they're definitely going to go with folks keeping. I think on those kind of pitches, you've got to go with folks. I think then that Bearstow, so there's not going to be that awkward uh, that awkward conversation with Johnny Bearstow. And then I think what they're going to really struggle with is the is the bowling kind of line up. What what way they're going to go with that? You know, I, I think I think Jack Leach will play. I think Ryan Ahmed will play. Joe Root can bowl a little bit of spin as well. And then it's going to be Jimmy Anderson and perhaps Mark Wood. So I think that that's going to be the thing. I think they're going to take it pitch by pitch, you know, venue by venue. But um, I think if all, it, I think the whole team's got to have a belting bloody tour, haven't they? You know, what I mean, if we're going to come away with anything. Bill, do you think it's going to be like your tour? In, was it 1993 when... No, 92. Um, we won 92. one match. We won yep. one match in 1992. And I think that that was against the Railway Eleven. <laughs> uh, I think it was the, it was the, it was the, it was the conductors and the train drivers, and we just managed to get over the line. John yeah, Emery, just, John just, Emery just, scored forty and just got us over the line, and that was the only match we won. And we were there for like three months. We got ah, oh, everything. We didn't win a toss. I mean, I think the tosses are going to be crucial. If you can win the odd toss, it's an half elf, doesn't it? You know what I mean? If you can get a score on the board. No, just go back to that 92 trip. That, that's a trip where India played four spinners and England decided to play four quicks. And it, 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 is, that, is that the tour that Dermot Reeves' mum ended up being the England scorer? Yes, yes. Because <laughs> lovely Clem Driver, Clem Driver, I think, had a heart attack um, on, the, on the bless him. He was a, he was a great man. And uh, it, it was a really big sort of like, it was about 200 stairs up to the scoring spot. And uh, I think he, he he went home. Even he went home. He was, even he got sent home. So he went very well. Dermot's mum did the scoring. All the planes started crashing. So we had to then um, go everywhere by train. And I think you're right. The, the first test match or something, I think we were on a train for about 18 hours, arrived the day before the test match. You know, and they all sort of like, sort of squeezed ourselves out of the train. I don't even think they gave us sort of first class, you know. We were in the <laughs> in the all on the roof and on the back of the room <laughs> with our coffins and everything. I mean it was absolutely chaos. But I mean it was one of those trips that I'll never forget and I don't think any of the boys will forget. It was just fantastic, you know, and you see the guys now and um, you know, there's that special sort of knowing you know, when you see the guys that are on that tour, because tour, because everything went wrong, uh, including the cricket and and the travel and everything. But uh, probably one of the most enjoyable tours I've ever been on. It was fantastic. Mm. Now, I wanted to. I know that the English cricket side currently, the current side, listen to us religiously, <laughs> and I thought that we should hear from a former captain that knows how to win in India, and maybe they can give he can give them some advice. So, Gilly. <laughs> Back when you were playing Guildhall mm. and you were winning easily in India, what was it that you did in those matches that England should do in the next five? I uh, definitely tequila was a big feature. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. And uh, if this England team are taking anything serious in their cricketing life at the moment and are listening to this podcast, they'll fully embrace it. The Prairie Fire on the tour. It, it just sharpens you up. It, it, it can, it, you know, the heat. The humidity, the conditions, the intensity of the crowd and the people. It, it's very tough to sort of have only personal space in India, isn't it? The volumes of people, um, you know, room service gets delivered and three or four people bring it in and they've generally got an opinion on your cut shot or your pull shot or how your wicket kept. Um, so you just need to take the edge off a fraction and keep keep relaxed. So that's where the prairie fire kicks in. Uh, so that that'd be probably my my number one piece of advice, uh, Philip. I know you got your hand up there. You'd like to say something? Well, no, no, you're right. It also burns out all the little deli bellies in there as well. You see, we did that. Oh. Just of that there you go. It gets rid of all the bugs. Wake up right yep. as well. 
And just a quick yeah. story about that. We was in it when we was in India. You're talking about people coming in with room service and what have you. Mm. And Embers had gone to bed one night, and we and as I was walking past with a couple of the boys, we and, and there's the um, the sort of like the breakfast menu, isn't there? The breakfast menu outside the room. Well, we ticked everything on the breakfast menu like that, and then we stuck our head out. <laughs> and a- Morning. There must have been forty people outside his room, <laughs> bringing everything. There was elephants. There was fat. <laughs> it was his Oh my gosh! Garlands were there. Everything. Petals were being. It was fantastic. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's, nah, that's uh, it is it is a it is a challenge. Just for, just to slightly digress and get a fraction serious for a moment. Uh, it, it, this is where the intrigue will be for me. Is this uh, the, yeah, whether we call it baseball or positive approach from England? It's been it has been remarkable and and fascinating to watch. Um, in answer, in all honesty, Prof, to your question, in two thousand and four, we had to go completely away from our typically positive attitude and approach and game plan, we went the other way. We went conservative to be attacking, defensive to get onto the front foot, so to speak, and um, put the slips away, put them at short mid-wicket, all that stuff, bowled straight, uh, had deep set fields, in and out, as you say, whether it was with quicks or with uh, even Warney bowling. So, um, yeah, that, that's where – and we were able to get it done, just play on the ego a little bit of what was a, a brilliant – Indian batting lineup at the time with Tendulkar and Ganguly and Dravid and uh, Saywag. So that that's that's good. we had to swallow our pride a little bit. Um, again, that's going to be fascinating to see if England can have that impact and control the game with the positive approach, or whether at any point they need to just pull the reins back in. But it's going to be yeah, it is going to be good fun to watch. Will England do a reverse baz ball, Vaughny? Will they? Well, will well, they put I- the blade away? Yeah, I think, I think I need to remind everyone on this podcast, listen, that England are the last team to win in India in 2012. So um, they have got history of, of doing well, but it was by playing a, a little bit um, up and down the gears. They had Peterson who played an incredible knock in Mumbai, won them that game. Uh, then there was attritional stuff from Alistair Cook. He got hundreds of runs over there, a bit of reverse swing, ball straight, as Gilly said. We had Monty Panasar and Graham Swan, two outstanding yeah. spinners, particularly when it's spinning around. Um, I guess getting 20 wickets is always going to be the challenge. But, uh, Phil, do you do you think Ben, when England smacked 400 on day one in Hyderabad, do you think Ben will declare late on in day one? <laughs> if he does, he wants to take a good look at himself. I tell you, first <laughs> innings runs are going to be crucial in India. They are going to be crucial. And I, and I, heard, some, I heard something, for, I think it was Sanjay Mandraker said, we're going to have 15 excellent days of cricket coming up. Now, even I can do mathematics, <laughs> and that's not. I don't think they're going to last very long. You know what I mean? Even, even five times five ain't fifteen. No, I don't think so. Anyway, but um, I think it's going to be crucial. That those first innings runs are going to be crucial. Listen, and a lot's been made of the spinners. You know, a lot's been made of the spinners. I think they go with Jack Leach, and I think they go with Ryan Ahmed, as I said earlier. But I think you said, Mike, if, if you can get some runs up front. And the ball starts spinning and jumping, and the odd one's going underground. It, 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 India's the kind of place you don't need a lot of flight and guile. You don't need to really have too much up your sleeve. You've just got to run up like a Monty did when you was over there and hit that spot and drive it into that good length on middle stump, middle and off stump, and let the pitch do it. So even though the likes of Jadeja and Ashwin are totally world class and our fellows are a lot less experienced, if they have the conditions with runs in front of them on those kind of pitches, they can make an impact. Yeah, I mean, the, these big series, Phil, are always, you know, like the Ashes series, England versus you, you kind of define careers, but you can also end careers. So which of the Indian players do you think will uh, have their careers ended in this series? Oh, I don't know whether too many of them will. I don't think too many of the bowlers will. I don't think too many of them <laughs> Well, they've got such a good ball, but I will say this: I will listen. That that now now Coley's not playing for the first two Test matches. You know you, you've got to get off to a good start, and you've got to try and turn round the kind of crowd momentum, and you've got to try and turn it around, don't you, Mike? And that sort of like you know, otherwise it just whooshes over you in India, and the next thing you know, you're done and you're out in the series. And so with no Coley there, 
Um, and there, there, there's a little bit of an inexperienced middle order in that Indian lineup as well, isn't there? There's a few boys who are coming in who haven't got that experience. And I think Shuman Gill's going to bat three and all. So there is that little bit of unsettledness. And I think England must play on that a little bit and give themselves a chance. If they, They've got to get off to a good start. Otherwise, it could be a roller coaster. Speaking of making careers there, Vaughan, there's a couple of new names um, in that England squad I won't put forward. Um, spinners and obviously talking to two great England spinners who've had huge success bowling in India in, in both ah. yourself. Um, so, you, you, you know, they're all, I'm looking at your quick info and it's good. So we've got Shoaib Bashir who bowls offies like you, Vaughan, and you obviously famously got two wickets in India. And Tuffers, you averaged just under 80 um, in the two games in India there. But Tom Hartley, another slow left armour. So what can these two do well to succeed? seed if we see them later in the series well first and foremost show Bashir he needs to get there yes yeah. he's, stuck in, he's, stuck, he's stuck in Abu Dhabi having a, a visa problem or two he's all, he's a good bowler I've seen him at Somerset young kid gives it plenty of flight um he's a real character you know I, I think Phil's right they'll use Joe Root's off spin so he probably wasn't going to play this first test but I've got a sneaky feeling we'll see him over the course of the five matches he he certainly has got a little bit of something different. He, he gives it that little bit of a tweak. He gets a bit of drift, gets the drop on it, so he gets plenty of revolutions on the ball. Um, I think we'll see him. Tom Hartley, I'm not too sure how much we'll see of him because of, uh, obviously, Jack Leach back in the side. Um, oh, bowling spin in India. Is, if the pitch is rag. I mean, Joe Root last time, you, you got to, they'll, they'll be worried about Joe Root. He got five for eight. <laughs> The last time, yeah, he did. He did. They're, they're the, going to be concerned the, the, about Joe. The, the, the two guys you're talking about, I think they've been pretty good picks actually, because both of them are about six foot five. Mm. Both of them really tall. Look to bowl the ball into the pitch. As you say, Bashir's got a little bit of F and G. And sort of looks to try and play a bit, but but they're big, tall guys. They bowl at a good pace as well. So I think that they, when they come, if they come in and get a game, which I think they will do at some stage, I think there's going to be a lot of people sort of going through. Uh, there's going to be a lot of changes. Mike? I think those guys that they've picked horses for courses for Indian pitches. There's been a couple of other kind of spinners that have been sort of like said that they feel a little bit hard done by for not going, but they're all kind of little shorter guys, you know, when the ball goes up from the hand. In India, the ball's got to go down from the hand. Yeah, Phil, do you, um, my concern about those two spinners is they don't play much golf. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bit worried about their putting, Mike. Yeah, well, they don't, they don't play a lot, so it's a real concern. How do you think Jimmy Anderson will go at his age over there leading the pace attack? Why would you go and do – what is he, 46 now? Why would he go and do that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Well, why, well, I'll, ask you the question. I'll ask you the question, but why wouldn't he? Ah, right. Yeah, why not? He, he, want... he, he, he loves playing. He, he, I saw a picture of him this morning. He looks fit. Yeah. He, has, mm. he has been doing plenty of running. He looks like he's uh, he's put a, a shift in to get fit. Not that he wasn't fit, but he certainly uh, looks trim. Uh, why wouldn't you accept a year contract for near on a million pounds? <laughs> Uh, to potentially play six or seven games of cricket in a year. Uh, and he loves massive. playing. Uh, why would you give that? That's a good point. Yeah, nice nice good point. Family match. <laughs> yeah, I think he'll do well. I think he'll do. He well, did well last time, point. didn't he? Mike? Bowling them sort of cutters and reverse swingers. And as Gilly said, having these little short mid wickets and all the little guys in front of the track. I think he bowled pretty well last time. Well, he's worked on his run up. I mean, I think at the age of 46, as you mentioned, Prof, he's finally found his run up. <laughs> oh. Andy, he's he's, he's 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 getting close to seven hundred test wickets, so it's a bit of a warning for the rest of the world that he's found his run up. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear! All right, can we move on? We've spoken about England far too long. This is absolutely no, boring the living shit out of me. So come on, let's push toughers. Tuffers, great, great seeing you. Great, I'm, I tell you, I'm not sure whether you snuck a bottle of tequila into bed with you there because last time we had the pleasure of your company, you smashed half a bottle in one sitting. So you, you've been talking some wonderful sense, but all due respect, let's move on to some more entertaining stuff. Fucking England right. and India, Jesus. It's it's pretty late then. We'll move on. And it's a perfect time, perfect segue yeah. into Australia versus West Indies. So thanks for joining us, Tuffers. Cheers, Kat. You and your Phil. Yeah. See you, buddy. There he is, Phil Tufnell, fantastic. Hey, guys, I reckon every guest we get from now on should be just lying back in a bed, 
just <laughs> absolutely chilled. You know, that was – thanks for organising that, Vaughn. Last minute, that was very good. Mm. Well done, well done. Yeah, he does, his be- he does his best work at night, Phil. Is that right? <laughs> um, and I also, Gilly – after his first effort, we were just going to intravenously put the uh, prairie the prairie fire into him, but uh, it was good. He was much more much more civil. <laughs> much more what a guy! Uh, now, perfect time. You did bring up Brian Lara, Vaughny. I wanted to ask you about standing next to him in the nets during the week, mm-hmm. and like we joke about Jimmy Anderson being forty six, Brian's fifty four. Why can he not be lining up for the West Indies at the Gabba? Mm. Well. Um, I'd hate to be cruel, but I will be. He probably could. <laughs> <laughs> He's playing well enough. I mean, I don't know. He, he was off to New Zealand for a match on Saturday. I don't know how many he got. Um, yeah, uh, for that. Um, yeah, that? It's yeah, called the Black yeah, Clash. Yeah, I'm not too sure if he got 100 or a 50. I'm, he'd have got a few, Brian. He was in good touch. Uh, yeah, I mean, to stand a few yards away from greatness is, uh, yeah, an honour. Privilege. Hey, Vaughny, yeah, no, I totally agree. And what a what a what a big thrill for Fox Cricket to have him. But uh, talking of Fox Cricket, mate, congratulations, mate. You did a sterling effort. You took the reins uh, in the absence of, um, I guess, myself and and Mark Howard and Huss. We were off doing the big bash. You you were uh, line producing. You were directing. You were hosting. You were doing the toss. Great <laughs> toss too. Got the big Ravi bowling action in there, didn't you? At the end there and. Uh, the flip of the coin. Uh, uh, so, congratulations, mate. How did you? How did you pull up, mate? You, on review, you happy? If you, you've all gone and watched the, the tapes back and reviewed it all, you, you're happy. I haven't. I haven't watched anything. <laughs> no, I didn't think so. <laughs> I it's not really your style, is it? But uh, no, it was a busy, a busy few days. Thank fuck, it was a two and a half day test. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks for all the messages. Of uh, yeah, thank, yeah. We, yeah, both, both yourself and Howie, thanks for all the messages to us all saying, yeah, good luck with the test. And yeah, yeah, we, we, we took that on board and we, we read them out every morning to all the team of how you were all missing us and wishing us all well. We, uh, yeah, we took that all in note. Big, we're a big team at Fox. <laughs> hey, come on, come on. I did send one before the text to, to, to the test match to you all. <laughs> saying how happy I'm in, not there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, to be fair, it was the shortest test match in the history of uh, test matches at the Adelaide Oval, 185 yeah. overs. So, uh, yeah. it, it was a two-day game. I mean, oh, I'll be serious for a second. I, I, I found it um, watching sad. The West Indies and, and the way that the game has left the greatest, you could argue, cricket in nation. You know, I'm not... Just saying, I just think West Indies cricket over the generations that we've all been following it is an incredible nation for cricket. And to see a team arrive with seven debutants, three that made the team for the Adelaide Oval, uh, to see a, a, a group of players that are trying the best and they're giving it everything. But, you know, the, the, the game and the ICC in particular, they've just let this, this great country just go to this position where all the players are going to play the franchise leagues around the world. Understandably, there's a lot more money in it. Um until they, they lighten up and realise that they've got to get some help towards, and it's not just the West Indies, other countries as well, and the wealth has to be spread out across them. I'm afraid Test Cricket, and we keep saying Test Cricket is the pinnacle, it is in our eyes, but the administrators that run the game have to act because if they continue to allow the West Indies, Pakistan could be next, New Zealand might follow. You know, If you just want a three-test match tier of England, Australia and India, well, that's the way it's going until they start spreading the wealth and helping out some of these other teams and paying them properly. Um, I'm afraid the Adelaide the Adelaide kind of week was was good because it's Test cricket and we all love it, but it wasn't good for the game to see that. It's not good for, uh, for Test cricket at all. What is it, Vaughny? What's happened between that Viv Richards, you know, Brian Lara era to now? Can you pinpoint it? Oh, I think sometimes you, you, you rely on, I, I think back in the day, I mean, you go back to... The 70s and 80s, the pitches, uh, the structure in the Caribbean, there probably wasn't as much for kids to uh, do as there are now. There's more opportunities and more options. Uh, but if you go and look at the pitches and the, the infrastructure in the Caribbean now, you know, the rest of the world has moved on. Um, you know, you look at India and what they have now compared to what they had 15, 20 years ago. It's a different landscape. Uh, look what we have in the UK, look what you've got here in Australia. 
And if you just let a country and a, a, a group of countries in the Caribbean to just be, you know, not give them the infrastructure. And, and of course, the ICC will say, oh, you know, they're wary of sending money because you're not too sure where it's going to get spent. If they are so wary, just put your own people in place to spend the money to make sure that the infrastructure is right and the pathway program's right and the pitch is right. You, you know, you, you speak to people in the Caribbean, that they don't even have the ground staff anymore because they can't afford it. So how are you going to prepare the pitches for the next generation to come through? And then obviously all these leagues around the world is a huge amount of wealth and experience in terms of the West Indies taking their players there. So the youngsters, you look at Shamar Joseph, what a story he is. But if the West Indies aren't careful and Test Cricket isn't careful, he'll be another one in a year's time. He'll go and pick the leagues around the world because that's where the wealth is. And you couldn't blame him if he did that. So... I'm sick and tired of us all talking about Test cricket being the pinnacle and we're all mentioning it and all of a sudden it'll be another young player that will get lost to the franchise leagues around the world if something isn't done right for the game and in particular West Indies cricket. Yeah, it, it, it strikes me. It's a really good point. The Shamar Joseph story looked, from a distance, looked remarkable. It looked like a, a real buzz. That is the, the one shining light to come out there. But, but that seems like almost, um, you know, potluck that something like that turns up there's no infrastructure there to have the pathway and so on so um you know for, for him to be a, a little diamond found in the rough somewhere and it came out on on his decision whatever a brilliant story for those that don't know isn't it that uh that little doco on youtube about his where he's from and and his journey and the way he's so warmly appreciated when he gets home he's a I tell you, he's a fit looking boy too Vaughn. He, jesus I mean, I thought, well, oh, he's, he's a fit lad, quick, yeah. very quick. That celebration, I reckon it's up there already <laughs> uh, with Imran Tahir. He's up where uh, he's trying to compete with Imran Tahir, which is good on his debut. I mean, to do it first ball and also to tell his teammates he was going to get a wicket with his first ball as well. That that that's some prediction from the young chap from Barakara in uh, in Guyana. Uh, yeah, love the guy. Of... You'll you'll see him in Brisbane. He rolls sharp, bowls nippy, little skiddy kind of nippers. Yeah, but then well, there's. Uh, Get him up the order. We can bat. He's got, he's got a lot of bat swing on him, which is good to see. But we, we want him to get 15, 25. There's not just one or two and then disappear. Uh, and, and, and with West Indies cricket over the last few years, you know that their players uh, have got that chance to go elsewhere. And we've got to make sure that, that chance it is there. But it's also very important that they're uh, looked after in their own backyard as well. Yeah. So uh, let's get to the serious point of Adelaide. What did you do then for two and a half days? Uh, well, very, yes. Uh, I got out of there and came back to the Coogee. Just on the Coogee, right? I, I'm, I'm intrigued what you all think. Co so, Coogee, I'm being told, is always uh, pronounced Coogee. Yeah, it's Coogee. Yeah, but it, it, how, why is it spelled C-O-O? -O? Yeah, uh, we, are we really going to start questioning how Australians say particular names? Because we'll be well, here for it, months. Why isn't it C-O-U? Could. Coogee. <laughs> Coogee. Could you, I, look, I don't know. Is it an Indigenous name? Maybe that's how they say it. I'm not sure. You're all, yeah, I think you're getting it wrong. <laughs> Ollie, what do you reckon? Is that correct? I'm glad you've come to me because I've just Googled it. And um, absolutely right. Kudji is derived from the Aboriginal word Kudji, which means a bad smell or a stinking place. That's what Kudji is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny now because on, you go up. there and it's just full of Englishmen. <laughs> I think you'll find that uh, definition was uh, had been updated more recently with the influx of English coming out. I think prior to that, it was um, beautiful pastures where the water runs, the ocean meets the, uh, the the land, but it's been updated since the influx of the palms. <laughs> I, look at looking at this, Vaughan is totally right. The original spelling is K O U G E E, and the smell was because of the rotting seaweed on the beach. That is why this sort of thinking place. <laughs> and and, there you go. and the Irish. And the carcass and the carcass of their last ashes tour of the English. That's rotting still <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> Having said all this, good joint. And a good joint for you to stay away you're out it here, Vaughn. Some <laughs> very good pubs, good hotels. Very nice. Uh, it's very lots nice. To look at. Little little Jack's on the corner looks after me, Rowley. So Whoa. yeah, that, there's my answer, Gil. I I spent a little bit of time in Little Jack's. I played a bit of uh, golf. Yes, I saw that. Snuck down to New South Wales Golf Club, hit a few balls, met a few friends, met a few. Uh, had a couple of meetings. It's just general shite, really. It's been nice. <laughs> How much longer are you here for, Vaughnie? How much longer you got here? I can't I can't give that kind of detail away, Professor. 
you know, in, in this world of security, you shouldn't be telling people when, when and where. Oh, but so you've it, told you. You've yeah, told you. It's, <laughs> it's, cloud, it's clouding in. I can't get the flight out. There's it, storms coming. Yeah. <laughs> my, my missus thinks I work on the Big Bash every day. <laughs> <laughs> she has no clue that the final's this uh, Wednesday. She thinks it's on, like, February the 15th. <laughs> I'll give you a tip, mate. Just just ease up on your uh, Instagram. <laughs> you might be giving it a, a hint. <laughs> now, we're on the big bash, boys. Should we get into that just quickly? Yeah. I mean, we touched on it last night, Gilly. That yeah. innings by the bat maker, by the wood whittler, um, who uh, – imagine that. So he now sells bison bats, is that right? And he's – the bat that he used last night, people can now buy? Yeah, coop, coopercricket.com.au. That's, uh, so he literally makes the bats that he uses and uh, and a whole lot of others, and uh, they look like good sticks too. But what a, what a humble young man. His mum was in tears last night. Um, Dad was there. It was uh, pretty emotional. And he, he threatened to do this last year. He got a quick fire 60 in one big bash game and, and – and Probably hasn't pulled the trigger properly again, but Jesus, he got it right. It was as clean a hitting as you're ever going to see. Um, it's a big, it's a decent sized boundaries up there at Carrara, and he he just kept launching over it. So I hope for his sake, if he can just get going uh, at the SCG and just get get the heat into the game, um, I think six are start favourites, but the heat have a bit of momentum from last night and they've been the dominant team all season. So it should be a, a ripping final. Gilly, you're speaking very highly of uh, Josh Brown then, rightly so. Does it have anything to do with his interview afterwards? And they said, you know, was that oh, yeah, know, yeah. special when I just loved growing up watching Gilly see ball, hit ball. Um, does well, that have anything to do with your... <laughs> <laughs> I've, me- I've mentioned the mum twice now in at the top of this podcast and just again, but only to try and get to that exact point. She did tell me when I gave her a big embrace and said, well done, be proud, enjoy your boy. And she said, it's all because of you, Gilly. So thanks, Kat, uh, Chris. Um, Chris Brown, she'll be at the game tomorrow night. We'll have her on comms somewhere probably. But, uh, yeah. You think Kath will be there as well? <laughs> I did see – I saw one grab with his mum and it was the most Australian response I've ever seen in my life. They asked how she's feeling, and she said, "I'm just fully stoked." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I went, that's so wonderfully Australian. Yeah, fully stoked. Absolutely. Um, right. So you do you both? If we do a quick little preview for Sunday, um, obviously Sixers go in favourites. Uh, the great man Stephen O'Keefe, sock, who I did ask to come on today, but completely ignore my text message. <laughs> It'll be his his last game at the SCG, he'll catch the ferry across as he does. He gets a ferry and then he gets an Uber to the game from Manly for the last time. Um, what do you reckon, boys? Will the Sixers smash him or will it be a tight one? I mean, is it going to be his last time or will he kind of lift the trophy and go for one more year? He's the only player in cricket history that, you know, you talk about, you know, we've had Wazim on talking reverse swing. Uh, you know, you've got bowlers bowling 90 odd miles an hour. He's the only player in cricket history that somehow... He can take the air out the ball. Mm. I don't know how he does that. It's remarkable what he does to the ball. He just and and he, I know he's only a short chap, but I don't think of anybody in the history game that makes the ball bounce the least. Mm. He can make a ball land and bounce about a millimeter <laughs> off the deck. So I, I, I'm going for the Sixers home territory. Sock in potentially his last game. Uh, Moses on reeks. I think's uh, a genius as a captain. I think he's just yeah. got. That knack. He's got the left arm, as he's got the variations, but he's he's got uh, plenty in his locker. So I'm going to go for the sixes. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Very good points, Vaughny. I think. Uh, uh, look, my, I'd love to see the Heat get up a sentimental one there, just uh, on the back of um, you know Brownie's mum giving me a hug and telling me that it's all because of me. <laughs> um, but uh, I think the sixes do stuff. There's no chance socks going around again, Vaughny. I tell you why he's. As soon as he's retired, he's moving up to northern New South Wales. He's going to live at a place called Lennox Head, which is my old stomping ground. It's in that area where I grew up. Um, he'll get up there. He'll he'll smell the aromas of the local uh, community. He'll get peace, love, and mung bean stuff. He'll buy a little farm with some angora and goats. He'll be walking around in a, 
a loincloth. They're made out of a yak scrotum. And he's just going to he's gonna be lost to the game. He's just going to be solely, so immersed in society up there. It's going to be a, a wonderful, peaceful, tranquil sort of society that he will not even consider playing cricket again. So that's goodbye, Sock. I am going to completely disagree with you. I'm going to say within six months, he will miss the tab uh, <laughs> yeah. in Manly too much. <laughs> and he will be back there. Okay. Down at the Ivanhoe tab, he'll be back. I reckon three months. He'll be back sitting in there, <laughs> betting on the trot. All right, get him just, in the super coach team then. <laughs> just, just on uh, new, just on new rules. Uh, I see that in South Africa, they're talking. I think Kevin Peterson's mentioned that if you hit a ball hundred meters, I saw that it should be a twelve. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> now, now I just want to bring it to the attention. So that's for the batters, yeah. So you you hit one hundred, you get a twelve. So if a boulder bowls one over ninety five, what, what happens to that? Do they get something? Oh, did Kevin I mean, did, did well, Kevin well, seriously suggest that? Yeah, he thinks yeah. if you hit a ball hundred meters, you should get a twelve. But and then A B de Villiers, the great A B de Villiers yeah. said, "Look, it's a great idea. I, I wouldn't say twelve, but I'd say eight. So you get an eight. I mean, Vaughn, is that like when you're I'm, negotiating with like a toddler and the toddler's saying something crazy and you sort of come in and go, oh, oh, you know what, we'll just, let's say this and we'll just, Mm. everything's okay, you know, we'll just, (laughs) I'll come halfway to meet you and let's just forget it ever happened. I mean, that's what it is. uh, Exactly. But it's like I said, oh, they need 60 off the last five deliveries. It's still on. Yeah. Is that, (laughs) hey, Vaughn, has has KP still got an English passport? (laughs) Not sure. (laughs) I'd revoke it, mate. I'd I'd block him. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, well, it, look, what do you reckon, Gil? A 12? You'd have had a few 12s. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we, we had a crazy competition in the 90s, which actually helped launch my career into international cricket called the Super 8s, where it was eight a side. And, and then if you hit it a certain – if you hit it down the ground, almost like the big football goalposts, you got a max. And, and you did get, uh, I think, yeah. eight or 12 for that. If you got it – so it was – it was really good. It was building on the foundations of uh, the old coaching manuals, like swing as hard as you can, slog wildly. But if you can do it with a nice straight technique, you'll get bonuses too. So um, it was <laughs> encouraging the, the youngsters to play straight, but it didn't survive. I think it cost hey, Australia Ollie. about a million bucks to put that tournament on and it survived one year. Ollie, just, uh, just on my career stats, if, if we go into the new era of 12s, obviously they'll have to backdate all of us. Mm. Um, I get I, I some huge sixes. So I, 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 how many more runs would I have ended up in my career? Yeah, test matches, you would have got six more runs. So five, seven, two, five. <laughs> there, was a, there, was a, there, there was a top yeah. edge in Cape Town. Um, yeah. <laughs> altitude. <laughs> well, there you go. Hey, six more. Hey, Ollie, have you also, have you fact-checked Tuffers yet? <laughs> Just to double check those um, ones yeah. that he was talking up. Yeah, there was a little bit on toughers. The, the main thing was he got the year wrong in India. It was ninety three, not ninety two. Um, and oh. he bowled the wrong end. First, in, first innings was forty one overs, none for one hundred and thirty two. Um, but then he did, he did, he did bounce back with thirty nine overs, four for one hundred and forty two in the second innings. Now, gents, the time is getting on, um, and we have a rather large announcement. Um, I don't know if it's real or not, but it's well. It's the fact that we we have a sponsor again. Um, yeah, again. What? what? They, they said it would never happen. Um, we we yeah. Ollie, do you want to take the reins here and explain yeah. to the guys? Yes, absolutely. It's part of the social update, um, of course, at Club Prairie Fire. Um, and uh, I'll get on to the sponsor first because they came through socials is how they they found us. But there was a bit of. Um, Hype after Brian Lara. We had Rodeo Canning say a shorter episode this week, but still a goodie. I'm starting to feel sorry for Vaughny with all the bullying. Wait, no, I'm not. Lol, keep it up. <laughs> so, anyway, <laughs> um, he's done that. Um, and um, so that was absolutely fantastic from them. And Brian Lara, speaking of that game, he actually struggled. He got nine off 19 balls and actually got out for less in the Black Clash. But it, they said he, they wasn't meant to get out, so they gave it no ball, which was very dubious. Um, so, um, oh. um, did, you, did you see Jonathan Thurston playing? Was that this yeah. year in that yeah, black that was, clash? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He was unbelievable. He uh, he's a rugby league great, Vaughn. If you haven't 
heard yeah. of him. Uh, one of the all-time greats, and he played, and he was he was wasted to rugby league by the looks of things. Amazing stroke play. Sorry, mm-hmm. Ollie. No, he was. no, absolutely. As, and Ruben Love, the Hurricanes rugby player fullback, took one of the best catches, um, but still fell over yeah. the boundary for six. Um, and also, so the, the Kevin Peterson thing, he said he, he mentioned the 12 runs two years ago, and then this week he said it's happening. So there is a league who seems like they've accepted the 100 metres being 12. I don't know who he knows or who he's speaking to, but it looks like oh, that. It'll be the uh, South Africa League. Yeah. Well, Heinrich Klaassen hit 150 metre six uh, this week in that league. So I don't know how many runs that's counting for. That how many? Yeah. How many? One five oh. Yeah. I showed Vaughn it yeah. on the, on the wall. It was, it was the biggest six of them. That, that's going to be worth it. 150 is 18. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> extraordinary but the main Jesus. update from socials that is right we had a message um from the absolutely wonderful david denton um from professional home services he loves the show and he's i said i gave him a call yesterday and i said um what do you want what can we what can we do how can we help you when Oh, you just reminded me of me. We are a few mates who met at the cricket club and decided to start this company. Basically, a few nobodies and battlers who are trying to make it big. And I said, well, that's the podcast. And um, he agreed. <laughs> that, was really, that, was really nice. <laughs> that was really nice of him. So we do have um, a little segment um, for the next few weeks with Professional Home Services. And uh, Gilly, I think you're going to intro for us and, and tell us what it's all about, essentially. Yeah, well, fantastic. Thank you, David and, and the team at professional home services yes battlers just trying to hang together have a laugh and get a job done and, and what they do they specialize they come into homes and uh and and rectify any issues that might have been uh, left behind by previous jobs uh, that have been done by I don't know, other trades or uh maybe a bit of home handiwork i'm definitely going to get getting david and his crew over to my house to fix up all my Fuck ups at home uh, as a handyman, but um, if anything which, needs repairing or made good, if you like, which house? Oh well, yeah, yeah. that's all right. We can sort that out. I'll, I'll, I'll shuffle them around the portfolio, mate, and uh, we'll see what we can get to. But, um, but yeah, yeah. So they, they come in and, and 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 tidy up and repair things that need fixing up around the house. So it's it's perfect, you know, stuff that you can just get them in. They they're swift, get in, get out, and and job done. So with that in mind, we thought the segment we'd go with is someone around the cricketing world, we, we can all pick one, um, who needs something repaired and we're expecting them to bounce back and be shiny and new and, and sparkling, just like the professional home services do to your house. So um, I'm going to start with uh, a redemption story for Johnny Bairstow. He's going to get over there and he's just going to stay in his fucking crease. And, and then life's going to be good. After that, no hassles. We're not going to have riots in long rooms. We're not going to have big, you know, uh, bilateral um, hassles between countries. It's just going to be good for the game. So go, Johnny. There's my repair. That's my professional home services make good. Very good. Who, who wants to go next, boys? I mean, that's, that's genius. I mean, I, I, I've got a feeling Johnny might get stumped in India. <laughs> That would be good. I, I, think, I think he might be leaving his crease to the Judasia and might get stumped or Ashwin, but we'll, we'll keep an eye on that. I'm, I'm going to go redemption, come back. I'm going to go India. India is a team. Obviously, they lost the World Cup final. And I've got a sneaky feeling uh, they're just going to get over the line against the Baz Ballers. Um, so shame Virat's not playing, but I think India might just have a, a little bit of a say over the next next week or so. Um England may get them. I, I, the the basketballers seem to get whoever they play the first time on day one. Australia, Esbaston, go back to New Zealand, go to Pakistan. They seem to surprise the teams on day one and then they kind of get used to playing against them. Mm. So India might get surprised on day one, particularly England the batting first. But oh, I think there'll be a little bit of redemption for Indian cricket. I think they might uh, might get a victory in the next week or so. Very good. Ol, you want to go next? Yeah, um, I'm. I'm going to bring it back to social. I'm going to. I'm going to say who's going to get redemption is Alec Athanasi. Now he was pointed out by Brian as one to watch. He struggled in the first. Um, the other name was Shamar Joseph, and the clip we took was Alec. So I'm backing him. Oh. In the Gabba. Get some runs and 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 do do well because Brian Charles Lara knows what he's talking about. So that's my pick. Yeah, good call. Good call. Very good. Very good. Okay, I'm going to finish. I'm going to go Stuart Broad. I think. Um, 
Brody only managed to appear in four of the five tests at the Ashes. I think he's going to improve, and we're going to see him at all five tests in India, sitting in the stands, is what I'm trying to say. He's also <laughs> going to appear on every cricket show in India and every possible podcast <laughs> over the next. Apart from this three. one. <laughs> Have you asked him, Vaughn? I was going to. When I bumped into him at the rugby, he said he was all up for it. He said, just get Vaughn to talk to me. I don't even know. I think he's in South Africa talking about 12s being hit. Brody <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, will be back. So there you go. There's our first segment. Thank you. Professional home services. Get them into your house. Make it good. Very good. So, Ol, all that's yeah. left to do, mate, um, yep. is the trivia. Well, can I just bring some of those? I, I did get trolled this week, and I tried to get him on the on the show, a guy called Graham Brook. Um, it, it was abusing me, and I, but I, I respect him because it was him. Usually on, on Twitter, you get abused by people like 4878218, and you're like, who are these people? Um, I did ask him on the show, no reply. Oh, Jesus. I just, I just thought, why not get a troll on the podcast? <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. That's a good call. You know, if they're going to troll you, let's just have a chat. Let's find out who they are and what they do, and then... Just have a nice, honest conversation. But he's uh, he's not responded, uh, Graham. Uh, Graham, if you do listen, and uh, I don't think you do, uh, but if you do, come on, come and have a chat. Let's have a chat. Yeah, I saw that. I, I might throw a message out to him as direct as possible to Vaughny and, and try and invite him on. But it does uh, remind me. Let's uh, listeners, viewers, whatever you are, let us know who you want on because we've got a couple mm. of names, really n- nice, juicy names lined up in the next week mm-hmm. or two, but, but uh, let us know. Give us some feedback. Who do we mm-hmm. want? At, at Club Prairie Fire is where you can find all of that. Vaughn, what did he say to you? What is What was this troll? What did he? Okay. I think I'll get the Let me get it up. Oh, no. He was, they... oh, yeah, he was speaking sense. There's no doubt yeah, about that. Yeah, he noticed. He said, uh, but what, what I liked about him is he, he said that no one respects me ever anywhere, which is fine. That's cool. But then he then messaged me about my opinions – on county cricket and i thought well wait a minute if, if you think i'm fucking useless and you don't why are you really <laughs> why are you listening <laughs> <laughs> so i didn't quite game but we'll get him on i'm sure he'll respond yeah. um yeah it, it, it'll be having a bit of downtime at the minute i don't know what he does but we'll find out what we'll nice i love job. it yeah. every everything you hear is don't give oxygen to trolls but we are going to promote this blog Correct. absolutely as much as we can we could have a troll section on this podcast. We have a troll a week, one a week. We, by the way, we, 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 let's be honest, we haven't got room for them all. No, no. <laughs> we would be here a week. I wonder if he's got a moustache. He might be eyeing off an ambassadorial role. Well, let's have a look. <laughs> I don't think he has. I think he, No, I don't think he has. He hasn't got a tash. No, but he, look, we'll get him on. He'll come on the show. I have no doubt about that. He'll yeah. come on and uh, we'll have a crack. Okay. Beautiful. All right, very good. Hey, Ollie, let's get into this quiz. We are running short on time. Yep. Um, I, was, I was reaching for the Patron, but uh... is there a theme? Or there is a theme. We've, we've got um, we've got trivia. It's actually so it's going to be uh, was well, England beat India and Australia beat West Indies at the moment. So it's Vaughny against India and Gilly against the West Indies is the theme Ooh, like this that. week. Okay, yeah, so um, let's get right into that um just put it up here so who had the highest test score was it gilly against the west indies or vorney against india uh i'll go vorney I, I i'm gonna go myself vorney 197 gilly 101 yeah length of the straight very good 197 uh, yeah. what happened skip what happened hang on well, there's a story. There's a story behind this. Uh, the week before at uh, Trent Bridge, I was facing Aji Agarka on 195, and I tried to launch him over extra cover for six, and got out caught behind. The week after at the Oval, I was on 197, and guess oh. what? I tried to do the same again. <laughs> how, did you, how did you get out that time? Oh. So, I think. They're actually uh, nearer this time, left arm. <laughs> yeah. so, so, so just back to back one nineties in Test cricket. <laughs> Times are never, tough. I, I never, I never got a double. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you also, um, we mentioned, didn't we? You've never got out in the nineties, but you did get out in the one nineties a few times. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
had an issue around 180, 190, yeah. You've got to learn to concentrate, mate. <laughs> <laughs> just tired, just tired. Oh, going for, oh, great. Going for those um, 12 yeah. runs. Um, oh. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so one, one all. Yeah. Yeah, actually, a fact, Ollie, I reckon at Trent Bridge, I might have hit a six that was over 100 metres. Uh, does that, does that get me too, too? That's your 200 oh, there. Hey, I'm going to clap. 40s, 30s, first test, 200. Well, bad it. Well done, mate. Uh, well deserved. <laughs> uh, all right, number two. Who had the more half centuries against the opponents in test matches? Um, is that Vaughny against India or Gilly against the West Indies? Gilly. Yeah, I'm going to go me. It is. It's Vaughny three, Gilly four. Yeah, mm. absolutely. Right, mm. the, guy, the boys are on today. So two points each, looking for full houses. Yeah. I, com- I, I, conf- I confidently said me there thinking it was about eight. <laughs> it was only four. <laughs> To be honest, I, I, I thought I was just one. <laughs> um, what about question number three is centuries? So, Gilly against the Windies and Vaughn against India. I'll go me. Vaughn. Oh, we've got to split one, boys. You keep well, saying yeah, it. Looks, like, looks like we're going to a tie break. Uh, Gilly, one. Vaughn, four. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, so, there you go, Harry. Very good going. Mm. Three all. Who had the better all, yep. average against their opponent? I'm going to say, oh, I did. I'll I'm going first. to go myself. Oh, geez, I was going to jump in first too and say Vaughny. Okay, so we'll yeah, same back, again. Back-to-back back 190s. <laughs> yeah. mm. Vaughny's was a very impressive 72.57. <laughs> Gilly. Wow. At 47.91. Also, <laughs> for all, yeah. going to the last one. Okay. What about ducks? Who had more ducks? Gilly, West Indies, Vaughnie, India. <laughs> oh, I reckon I... Hang on. Let me think. 2000, 2001. I'm going to go, Gil. Vaughnie. I'm going to oh, go. Here we go. This There's is the break. Gonna win. Vaughny. Vaughny. They've gone for each other this time. Gilly. Actually, Vaughny got one. Gilly got zero. <laughs> yes! Oh, there you go. Gilly gets the win. Very, very I, 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 I know it was at Lords on day one at Gaia. I think it let me guess, trying to launch over cover for six? <laughs> I, mean, I reckon it might have been the first over of the game. Yeah. I reckon um, yeah. if, if we look closely, their social media teams probably shared it as well. So we can probably dig that out in the next week or so. Um, <laughs> it'll be in a top five somewhere for sure. Um, how many balls did Vaughny face? Can you see, Ol? Was it um, right at the top? It doesn't actually say, but it, um, not many. I, I'll, I'll dig it out. India, but very impressive that one duck. I'll, I'll find it now. I'm sure it was a good one. All right, hey guys, we are well and truly out of time. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for joining us. All that's left is the toast. I'm pouring um, as we speak. Uh, very that good. One. And yeah, the comment was that Brian's episode was a little bit short, so we've gone over time today. Yeah, well, yeah. well done, uh, Vaughny, on getting um, the cat toughers on. Uh, well done, all. Good luck to. The combatants in the BBL and to uh, West Indies hopefully fighting back and showing that there is life in the old dog of Test cricket yet in the Caribbean. Cheers all. Yes. Cheers. And also, also to Vaughny's double ton. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah well batted. True, true. <laughs> Got, I've just looked at the no scorecard. There were zero sixes at Trent Bridge. Oh, no. oh. What about the Oval? What, what about the Oval? Uh, it was a Garka, and at the Oval, there were also zero sixes. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you are adding mayonnaise to your career, Vaughny. Come on. <laughs> but did Vaughny hit a, what about a the one eighty that went for 100 metres? What about the 183 at Sydney? Did I not hit a few there? <laughs> 183 with a six won't get you to two, 200, so we can't celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have hit four sixes in Sydney. That gets me to double. It does. How many sixes did he hit, all in Sydney? Oh, we got this is some real dig. What I will find is it was a seven ball duck that we were asking about at Lords um, LBW. Uh, not first over. No, no worry. Lords, the, the, uh, the, they'll play every ball this afternoon. Don't you worry about that. Maybe, maybe you're thinking about when you were bowling, Vaughny. 
Is that where the mix-up's coming? Yeah. All these sixes well, that you remember. Do I do I get anything for that? <laughs> no. Well, if it can see the hundred and twenty meter six. <laughs> I got it from monsters. <laughs> <laughs> they should be credits. They should be credit notes. You get some in your bank. <laughs> Oh, okay. By the way, Gil, uh, the day-night game, pink ball, do you think it'll go into Saturday? Uh, look, I tell you what, it, it probably wouldn't, but I believe uh, there's a huge, humongous cyclone encroaching on Brisbane. So uh, we might be there, mate. Get ready for some fillage. Feel free to take oh, the yeah. reins. <laughs> you can continue to host and produce whatever you like when the fillage comes in. But uh, I, I, I've had my two days, Wes. I <laughs> uh, look forward to seeing you, mate. All right, very good, boys. Go well at the Gabba. Um, hope the West Indies do a lot better. Enjoy Brisbane. We are at Club Prairie Fire. Remember, there is a hidden eye in Prairie, P-R-A-I-R-I-E. Uh, we'll be back next week. I'm not sure where, lads. Somewhere. We'll work it out. Maybe Somewhere. in person, maybe not. <laughs> anyway, thanks, Toughers. Bye. Adios. Bye. Well, remarkably, you've watched the show. Thank you. That's all I can say. And if you really like it, press something, I don't know, something on the screen, press it, uh, or subscribe. That'd be really handy. It'd be really nice. Thank you.